Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be discussing Sarah Ingham at length. Not my choice, hers. She's the only one on show today. She looked a pretty picture, but she needed to make her lo herself look prettier. Before we get into this insanity, please head on over to my other channel and subscribe there if you haven't already, because we are sadly lacking in subs right now, and you need to make me happy so I can go through this shit every single day. Right, so without further ado, let's get on to the biggie. I mean, I don't mean biggie, I don't mean Sarah, I don't mean Sarah when I say biggie, that's what I mean. Right, the Q&A. Well, I've got to say that I can watch anything with Ingham's. I don't mind. I can watch it. It's kind of like a routine. I go through five o'clock every day. Well, 5.36, 6.37, it's all the same, isn't it? <laughs> so, every day I can go through it, no problem. Even if it's shit, no problem. I can do it, no problem. I looked at, <laughs> I took one look at this, <laughs> this vlog, and I said, fuck that. <laughs> my God, I thought, my God, absolutely no chance. I cannot for the love of God, put myself through it at all. 48 minutes, Sarah Q&A, and um, a get ready with me, it, all in the title. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, no, 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 I can't. Seriously, I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to do it. It took me all of 25 minutes to get up the courage to actually switch it on, right? I thought, I'll just put it on, background noise maybe she'll say something worthwhile okay but i really really did not want to sit through the 10 20 minutes that she talked about her bloody makeup routine because i for one i'm not interested i get i'm not her target audience okay but she did go on on about it a little bit longer than i'd like anyway i'm gonna skip through most of that if you want to watch it i suggest don't because i don't want you to give them a view i didn't even give them a view i didn't i didn't do it secret right <laughs> so <sighs> okay we're gonna start from uh, a random point in time foam oh yeah so nice. You see, this doesn't lather up as much. The, the superfoods cleansing, cleansing foam is like a blooming bull. Can we just take a moment right now to just appreciate just how lovely it is that Sarah likes to put nothing on her face? You know, uh, it wasn't it not too long ago where she proudly announced, in fact, that she doesn't use any sort of face creams or anything like that because it's good genes that's exactly what she said she has good genes she doesn't need to use anything except for water she is so lucky in that respect <laughs> it was different to me but you know what do i know <laughs> i don't wear any of this shit all back on your face and i love that oh it feels so nice and this one smells really good though <laughs> having to do all this bent down Sorry, Sarah, but uh, I just wanted to take a minute here to look at your toilet, your open plan toilet. We don't usually get so much of a good view of it. So uh, I wanted to just to see where the um, the magic happens. <laughs> just don't know. Don't, don't, just don't talk to me. Just thought, just use Chris. Sorry for the extreme zoom in here, but, you know, it was an editing error. But whilst we're here, can we take a look at Sarah's little um, toothpaste mark? Why is she re-toothpaste, re-brushing her teeth? Is that not what she's doing? She said, she said at the beginning of the vlog, excuse the toothpaste mark on my top. Now, if she's already done, if she's already done, brushed her teeth why did she go through the whole process again was it just for show or is this re a real life morning routine i need to know this tap why am i trying to squeeze myself on this one and then after just 
I always pat my face dry after cleansing with a fresh flannel. Don't ever rub it, you should just pat it. And then I'm going to use a little pad and some of this hydrating toner. Love this toner, I've gone through it, gone through so much of it. You can just spritz it on your face or you can apply a bit to a pad and just rub it on. That's what I prefer to do. It smells so good. It smells like spa, a spa, or like a spa with tea. <laughs> Spa with cream tea, but just the tea, not the cream. That smells really good. I really like it. Just gonna give that a few seconds to dry. And then last of all, I will apply this, which is my favorite moisturizer. Chris moans at me every time I buy it because it is expensive. I do wait for it to come on sale, but he still moans because it's still expensive. <laughs> but then he uses it all. So I have to buy this more than I'd like. But yeah, he, he literally moans every time I buy it, but then it ends up in his toiletry bag and he just uses it every day. I'm like, why can't you just buy your own or buy like a similar one? No, he wants to use mine. Yeah. <laughs> if it was night time, then I would also use this Eliz Elizabeth Arden 8 hour lip protection. It's so nice on your lips. I'm really fussy with lip balms creams i don't like them they make my lips feel all slimy and soggy but this one's actually really really good and i do apply this i don't know why i apply it before but i just do i apply it for bed it's not for bed it's not like a bedtime one but I, excuse me i just apply that every night before bed also really recommend these facial wipes so good smell absolutely divine again like all elements products and they just leave your skin looking and feeling really good So at the beginning of this whole thing, Sarah went into great detail to explain how none of this was gifted and it was all purchased by herself, but it doesn't come across that way. You know when you have all the products which are all from the same company that you've neatly placed on a shelf that are neatly turned so the, sh the name of the company is on show the whole time it kind of comes across as a bit disingenuous when you're also saying it's not sponsored it's i'm not saying it actually is because i'm not so not so certain that it actually is i'm just thinking that she's maybe trying to like get some sort of sponsorship but you know it could be anything it's sarah after all no it's just really really annoying see if i can move around a bit <laughs> scary doll close it by itself i'm only joking that was esme right um so i definitely make up for it on the lack of expensive makeup because my makeup bag is so budget i need to clean it up mila's been in and she's she's scraped all of that powder stuff out and now everything is complete like everything's covered that's a bit more expensive everything else is like high street bought um and the same products that i've been using actually for the last 20 years probably everything needs clean it oh my gosh it's so bad in here guys look at this this is what pretty much all my makeup inside is looking like right now she's is that the money that oh my god <gasps> lipstick lids off oh fingernails right i can't use these like this i'm just gonna clean it all oh my gosh me i did i just said to you guys didn't i, I just spent 10 minutes looking for my deodorant and i then spent another 10 minutes looking for my makeup has anyone seen my makeup bag? Because I always leave it in here, like it's always on my desk. And Chris was like, no, I've not seen it. And I was like, well, where is it then? He's like, I don't know, why would I know where it is? I was like, well, I always, it's always on my desk and it's not there now. And he's like, oh, Mila had it yesterday. So it's behind the blind in our bedroom. Oh, great. So. <laughs> right, okay. So a couple of things here, Sarah. Firstly, Chris saw me... <laughs> Chris saw Mila with your makeup bag and just didn't do anything, just didn't take it off her or didn't do anything with it, just allowed Mila to play with your makeup bag just willy-nilly and that was fine. That's Chris being his parent. <laughs> Chris being the parent, what the hell? Okay, and the second thing is that this happened yesterday and you only just found it today? And Mila's made all that mess in there and you didn't notice that Mila was covered in like makeup shards and whatever crap, right? So wh where were you? 
<laughs> what were you doing this whole time since yesterday that <laughs> you didn't notice your kid was all messy and, uh, you know, <laughs> Jesus. I know you like to have this, like, child-led learning thing that, uh, you know, kids are just going to be allowed to run free and make their own mistakes and stuff like that. But come on, you've got to keep a little bit of an eye on them. Foundation. I don't prep my skin. I just go straight in with foundation. I know some people use primer, stuff like that. I'd have time for that. And my foundation that I've been using is literally about £6. Buy it on Amazon. It's very hard to get nowadays because they've stopped selling it in the high, high street stores that they used to sell it in. But it's this one. Bourgeois Paris Healthy Mix. And it is the best it's very light for your skin in fact i haven't worn i've only started wearing foundation again in the last few days i haven't worn foundation since the start of june i always have like a summer free skin so i won't wear anything on my skin other than sun cream and moisturizer and daily products obviously but no like actual makeup at all during summer so i've only started wearing it the last few days i like to just you know it's nice to just give your skin a break and also because we're traveling often. Number one, it just sweats off anyway. And number two, because I get a bit of a tan when we travel, this becomes too light. So I wear it in shade 55, which is like beige or dark beige or something like that. Honestly, it's so I can't wear it in summer anyway. But the last few days I have started wearing again. And yeah, it's, it's just lovely. It's really light, it's not thick at all. It's really, really nice. So let's go. Okay, Sarah, so I can't stress this enough, but nobody, just nobody wants to watch you put your makeup on. Nobody. This whole, oh, relatable Sarah, this is how why you've changed the whole branding to the channel to be just you, because you think that you're going to be the star of the show and, and everybody's going to flock to the Ingham channel to watch Sarah Ingham put her makeup on and, and talk just like a relatable mother that she is, you know? No, Sarah, I'm sorry. But let's have a look at some questions. Seeing this one pop up a few times, actually. Is your Nana okay? There's no mention of her in ages. She's absolutely fine. I speak to her all the time on the phone. I haven't been up to see her in a little while. Oh, yay, Nana's alive. Thank God for that. I was, I was starting to get concerned. I thought she had, uh, you know, popped her clogs and all that. I don't know. But I am going up, well, I was supposed to be going up this week, but something's popped up and now I have to go up next week. But what? Right, okay, Sarah, I want to break this down for you and for those who don't know, because that sounds to me pretty f effing disgusting, if you don't mind me saying so. You were supposed to go up to see your nana this week, but something's popped up. What was that thing that's popped up that's so important that you need to put your nana off for another week? What was it for anybody that doesn't know they went on a trip? They are currently away. That is what popped up. How the f <laughs> I'm sorry, but come on. Most people have trips booked up, right, to go away. So you already know that you're going away. But to put her off because you decided on a spur of a moment just to go on holiday yet again and it's something that just really couldn't wait any longer so my god it just couldn't wait you couldn't wait to get away so you needed to put your nana off again jesus god why why couldn't you have moved her forward then you know just saying maybe you could have invited her over to, you know for tea or or whatever i don't know jesus people are something else i'm going up and seeing her next week she's absolutely fine um and i do speak to her on the phone lots throughout the week this is quite a good question are you going to start to prep the children's lunches or i guess all you mean meals before you go into hospital to have the baby let me start and help you out with this one sarah i'm going to say no because uh why would you start now break the habit of a lifetime and everything no i'm not <laughs> i'm not a lunch prepper lunch in our house i think i've spoke about this before actually not many of us eat lunch so the younger two obviously i'll make them lunch every day 
But the older three, they stopped. I mean, Isabel doesn't eat lunch, really. She'll have like maybe some hummus or some carrot sticks or something or some, I don't know, some fruit or yogurt or she'll have more like a snack. And then Esme and Isla, they like to make their own lunch. So I don't know when that ha- when that started, but it was a it was a literal a good couple of years ago, where they'd say, "Can we do our own?" Because we know like how we want it, or we know what how much sauce we want in our sandwich, or we don't want a sandwich today, we want this. Whereas Jason and Mila are, are at the age where they'll just eat whatever I pop down for them. So it's only really Jason and Mila that I f- I physically make lunch for during the day, and. It's different obviously each day. It depends on what we're having for dinner with what I'll give them for lunch. It depends on what we've had for breakfast with what I'll give them for lunch. Like if we've had toast for breakfast, I don't think I'd go for a sandwich for lunch. Um, Or sometimes we'll have like a hot lunch. And so if we're having like a lighter dinner, blah, 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 blah. But it's just not something I'd... I wouldn't prepare lunch. Like I wouldn't prepare lunch. (laughs) Yeah, we've been through this before many times. They don't... They're not a lunch type family they're not a breakfast type family in fact they just eat dinner right so they basically go through the entire day without eating food isn't that right sarah that is except for maybe that's why the uh, snack cup is is constantly empty because you don't eat actual food during the daytime and you think that as a parent that might concern you a little bit but not sarah ingham no she has her own unique form of parenting which is uh yeah like in advance it's just there in the fridge while i'm in hospital i'm not planning on staying in hospital and with mila i came home like the same day was it i think it was the same day so there's plenty of hands in the house to just whip them up a sandwich like chris will be here he can i'm not like i kind of understand if it was like a single parent maybe or a parent who has a partner who's away all the time or has to get straight back to work because i definitely feel like i need to think more about that if i didn't have chris at home but no and for as for prepping meals i wish i was that person no i wish my family were that person because my family honestly are terrible at reheating anything Esme and Chris are the worst and I'm gonna blame that on the fact that they have a phobia and it is a genuine phobia it's not like anything else it's a ge- Chris is better as he's got older but he still has that what's the date on that I'm sure we can eat this and he won't enjoy the food I'm not gonna say anything I'm kind of the same similar not quite that bad but if I know that it's been in the freezer for a good amount of time then I won't want to eat it if i know it's been defrosted i'm, I'm very like mm, i'm not sure so yeah it's i get it i get it not as badly as they do so if i was to for example batch cook a spag ball no say i cook a spag ball and there's like at least two portions left over i'm like oh pop that in the freezer and esme and chris literally i like why no one's going to eat it? And they won't. Like, they won't reheat it and eat it. And I know unless I reheat it, like, for Jason or Mila, it won't get eaten. So there's no point in me batch cooking meals because Jay, because Chris and Esme, they, they just wouldn't eat it. And I, I don't know, it's just them. It's just, I think it stems from their fear of, is it definitely hot enough? Is it, is it definitely not past the date that you can eat this? I don't know. So that's why we've never food prepped before. And I won't be again this time. Random question. Where is your black sideboard from in your dining area black sideboard maybe the gray one do you mean the dark gray one must be we don't have any other sideboard in there i can't remember it was one of these furniture shops and it was mega expensive i can just remember cringing so bad when we bought it because it matches the dining table and the coffee table which are solid marble honestly you cannot pick those things up. I knew marble was heavy. I didn't realise how heavy. Like, it's solid. I'm trying to think, like, how much it was. I think it was about £3,000. Is that expensive? I think that's expensive. I think it's extortion, personally. But it's because it's marble. And it was just from a furniture shop. But even if I could remember the name, it was before we even moved into our old house. So we're talking maybe six years ago. I don't think they'd still have it for sale. But, um... It's nice, it's nice, but I kind of feel like sometime soon I'll want to change that up in there. I don't necessarily love the marble anymore. 
Well, that's a damn shame, isn't it? It's a shame that your entire house is decked out in this stuff, isn't it? <laughs> Gonna have to change it. quite a few things around if you're going off marble, Sarah. I do love it, but when we were sh um, traveling in Scandinavia on the start of this year, at the start of this year, um, we stayed in a cabin and it had the most perfect dining room table for our family. It wasn't marble, it was like wood, and I absolutely fell in love with it. So I'm still on the hunt for one of those. Baby girl names you love but won't be using. I've already done this in a previous vlog, but a couple of names that I didn't say on that vlog that I do love. Um, one of them is Primrose. Oh my gosh, every time I think of that name, it's just so blooming pretty. Yeah, it's a bit too um, darling buds of May for me, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love it and I forgot about it when I was doing my baby names I love but won't be using. I actually, let me think, I actually love it for a second name. I don't like Chris's second name and Chris is like, it's definitely, and every time I mention like Primrose, he's like, we can have that as a third name and I'm like, no, I love it. It's not, I don't like your second name and you've chose the first name. I'm having the second name. Maybe I could use that as a second name. I don't know, but I do really like the name Primrose. I also really like the name Avia. I would never use that because Esme called her baby Reborn Avia. So now every time I think about that name, I think about Reborn dolls, <laughs> which is not a bad thing, but I do really like that name. But yeah, I really like Primrose at the minute. I've liked it for a long, long, long time. And what do you guys think of that name? It's a bit different, right? Prim, Primrose. I think it's just stunning. What date is your baby due on? Our baby, people don't like tend to give away like the date that their baby's due on. I always have. Um, and I understand why people don't, but we're actually due on the 13th of, we're due on Friday the 13th, which is so random. I'm about to give you a couple of um, little randomness things now. Our baby's due on Friday the 13th. I was born on Friday the 13th. Chris was born on Friday the 13th. Our first child together, Esme, was due on Friday the 13th. His mum was born on Friday the 13th. <laughs> My sister was born on Halloween, which is also a spooky day. Not 1-3, but 3-1. And this baby, our last baby, is due on Friday the 13th. Well, your entire family is starting to make a little bit of sense there, Sarah. What are the odds, though, I reckon? <laughs> Both Sarah and Chris being born on friday the 13th that is bad enough we already knew that anyway but it you know just thinking about it it is really bad and um it just makes you think yeah well they've got, got so, some sort of curse over them a curse but add to that that jane was also born on friday the 13th and she is not the nicest lady in the world and then add to that that two of the children were also due on friday the 13th it's just giving me adam's family vibes i'm sorry will she come on that date though who knows who knows another thing that one of you guys pointed out that i didn't even think about and i actually think it's so cool is that all of our children all of our birthdays in our family wait let me get this right so there's two months and then a gap no, I'm not saying that right. Hang on a minute. So for every family birthday, every birthday in our family, it goes two months of the year, miss a month, two months of the year, miss a month, two months of the year, miss a month. So March and April, Jace and Isla, Miss May, June and July, Esme, Chris and Mila, Miss August, and then September, October, which will be Isabel and the baby, Miss November, and then December, me. So it's like two, it's like April, May, Oh my gosh, March, April, miss a month. June, July, miss a month. September, October, miss a month. December. Did I explain that? Did I explain that right? Hopefully I did. Does Isla still, I'm just gonna answer one more very quickly before I get myself finished getting ready. Does Isla still suffer with OCD? No, she doesn't. She did go through a stage during lockdown in 2020, I think it was, where she got really upset because she felt like she was having to repeat things that she were doing. So she'd put a cup down and then she'd feel like she needed to pick it up and put it down again or she'd switch a light off in her room and then go downstairs but then she'd have to come back upstairs to check it was switched off um just little things like that and i remember it did get on it did not get on top of her but she did get upset about it why do i keep doing this we sat down we bought books we chatted i'm sorry who bought books you or was it um, an iFam that bought her a book? If I remember rightly, that was actually the truth. 
we supported her by going through all the things she was doing and asking what were making her feel like she needed to go check on them like does it matter if the light was still on um i got a book and i read about supporting a child with ocd and then we got her some books to sit down together with her and read through them and honestly within a couple of months it had gone completely gone um it was just a a thing that she had for a couple of months And I believe it was all down to like the time that we were in and the pressures and the very quick change. Okay, so I can't speak for exactly how Ayla was feeling about the reasons why, etc. Sarah is alluding to the fact it was COVID and there was lockdown and everything, right? So there was other reasons why this was probably happening one was that um, if i remember rightly you had a, an entire 20 minute vlog where you just sat down in front of a camera and told your ifam everything that was going wrong with Isla, how bad things were and that people were being suicidal and everything whilst Isla was sat there watching you listening and taking everything in do you understand how damaging that is you know when you say to everybody oh well we 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 parent our kids the way we want to parent them you know it's that form of parenting which actually causes your child to be like that and have feelings like that and um, be worried about things like that because of how you parent your kids i don't believe it had anything to do with covid it might have done it might have been a trigger because of um what was going on in the world she may have seen the fact that there was millions of people dying all around the world you know if she watched the news you know she's um she's not necessarily taking after sarah ingham in um you know back then so she may have seen lots of deaths on the news and um it may have frightened her it may have been worse the fact that you were leaving her on her own all the time and then the fact that um who was it was it esme was chasing her around the house and making her scared things like this i'm just saying there was a lot of circumstances around that time add to that the amount of times you clickbaited the fact there was an intruder in the house you know things like this don't quite go together with an eight-year-old you know so there, there are these things and then you you <laughs> yeah of course you do you just uh, lay the entire blame at that at the doors of um lockdown yeah that's easy for you in circumstances and everything like that that all children went through at that time and i know it didn't affect some kids at all didn't affect isabel didn't affect um esme i don't believe but it did affect some children to a degree and I feel like that's and I feel like Isla was one of them but she's never suffered with anything like that since then oh that's such a sweeping statement Sarah she's not suffered from anything like that since then possibly not OCD related but um everybody who watches your vlogs can tell you that Isla is suffering from something it's not nice to watch it really really is not and um i've talked about it so many times i don't think you're ever going to listen to me so i uh, i'm just going to say this your daughter is um really suffering in in some way the way that she bursts out crying randomly for nothing isn't normal at all even if it's pre- pretend because what you'll say is oh that's just for the vlog that's just for the vlog we make her do it yeah that's not any better if if you are telling her to burst out crying for the vlog that's not normal either if she is bursting out crying because she doesn't know how to react and quite often she does not because whenever there's a like a sit down moment and you are getting she's getting like a surprise or whatever uh, she always always looks over to her sisters to see how she's supposed to react that is not normal so i'm just saying sarah you just look at your vlogs if you don't look at your child look at your vlogs to see how your child your children are you know how they are 
if that helps you look back at your vlogs okay i'm dressed i'll do a bump um update at the end there's a few people asking on the questions for that have you decided on a name yes we have are you pregnant who's the dad well it's not me is it fucking hell <laughs> seriously i thought that was the best question Will you be filming the birth? I, I can never answer this question because it's always one of those things that you just never know how you're going to be in the moment. Oh, I'm sorry, Sarah. I didn't realise that these uh, filming the birth as the uh, baby is coming out of you um, was in fact impromptu and you didn't plan on it. You just thought you'd wing it and see how things were in the moment. I didn't realise that. I thought it was whole, all planned and, uh, you know to get you finances but mate, i was wrong i'm sorry we have filmed jason miller's births and i'm so glad we have that footage i'm so glad we have it because it's such a special moment yeah that's brilliant i mean do you know this sarah i don't know if you do actually but do you know this lots and lots of people around the world actually do have footage of their own birth you know they want to film it special moment memories etc which is fine what they don't do you know what they don't do they don't put it on youtube and monetize it you know that's a possibility so keep it for your memories that's brilliant but um financial that's a little bit dubious if you ask me i'm sorry i don't know i just think it's lovely to have but you never know like how a labor's going to go and my labors were quite quick especially with mila it was only like it was like three hours or something so you just you, you just never know how many weeks are you now 32 um i will we will obviously be, be filming the birth if we can but i'd also like a water birth this time i'm not sure how that would work um with filming are you watching women world cup no not because we don't support women not because we don't support we're just not a sporty family it just doesn't interest us i wouldn't watch any football <laughs> i wouldn't watch any football golf darts snooker they're all just the same to me i just they're just not my thing so again sarah just because they're not your thing it makes it not the family's thing right <laughs> because because weirdly enough your entire family have to do the exact thing as everybody else nobody can be an individual no you always have to copy each other maybe here's a here's a good point actually maybe that uh, your kids who are homeschooled could actually benefit from a level of sporting activity you know it just that's just normal you know because you're homeschooled don't say that they're not into sports just they are they are <laughs> they are your um your daughters like dance uh, they like swimming they like various sports they're not not sporty you know and i find it very interesting that you categorized football and darts and golf and uh snooker they are very vastly different types of, of sports you know football is like a team sport um snooker is an individual golf is an in individual and so it is uh, darts it, you know they're very different Anyway, you do you. But also, I would have thought that, you know, why not just su support the women? Or, you know, be supportive towards the women that uh, were representing your country. I, for one, I personally, I don't really like women's football. I don't watch it, right? But I watched all of the World Cup, most of it anyway. And, um, you know, I thought to, to a degree it was quite entertaining, you know? I did. I thought it was entertaining. Now, you as a woman should be supporting other women. You should be encouraging your other kids to support women and not drag them down. I know you are a Tate loving family. So that kind of goes against the whole bringing up women kind of thing, right? <laughs> but, you know, anyway, I think I've laboured my point a little bit. They're not our thing. Chris would never watch football. It bores him. And yet he's been to Wembley Stadium. Why was he at Wembley? I gotta ask. Hmm? Hmm? He went to see um that like 
concert gig a few years ago with the yeah, fucking hell. Anyway, my contempt for people who dare to go to football stadiums but don't even like football. I'm sorry, it's just not a thing. Okay, just don't. You don't get to walk on those football pitches unless you actually support football. I'm sorry. It's just me. It's just my thing. <laughs> okay. Can't. I w- the only football that we have in our family is playing in the garden with Jace with a football. <laughs> and that's it, basically. That's another good point, actually. How do you know that Jace isn't a sporty type boy? How do you know that he doesn't like football if he doesn't like to watch football, if he's never been encouraged to do so? You wouldn't know that, would you? Now, wouldn't you think that it would be a good idea to possibly expose him to that? You could maybe take him to see a football match. You've got a few teams around in the, the locality where you live. And, um, you know, because when he gets older and with his peers, it might help him fit in a bit more. I mean, I'm not saying that you have to like football to fit in, but lots of boys do like football. And, uh, you know, when he when he chooses to go to school, and we'll get on to that in a minute, when he chooses to go to school, he might have, you know, more chance of making some friends on the football field and things like that. Good luck to them though. Was this pregnancy unplanned? No, it was not. It was very much planned. Um, can you do Esme's room tour? That will be up to Esme. I will ask her if she fancies doing one of those. Um, how do you feel now this is your last pregnancy? I actually answered this on yesterday's vlog, but I do feel really sad. I do feel sad, but I feel selfish saying that because I know I'm really lucky to be able to have experienced six easygoing, healthy, pregnancies it's really 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 an achievement and, a, and something that I know that a lot of women would do anything for but there's still it doesn't take away that I do still feel that niggling oh I'll never get to do this again or something like that but at the same time I'm content with my six children for sure have you ever fancied a home birth I thought about I, I answered this question as well recently in um, my pregnancy Q&A had did think about home birth for about 10 minutes and I just don't think it's for me. It's not even necessarily to do with the fact that what if something was wrong with the baby when she's born because I know that that's quite rare. It's not necessarily that. It's more to do with, I actually like hospital, the hospital. I actually, I know lots of people have anxiety and fears about going to hospitals. I'm not one of them. I do like going there and having that it's always felt like a special experience for me it's never been a negative it's always felt like something positive and I feel like when you've got so many children at home like I have um it sounds just gonna sound really mean when I say this and I don't mean it to sound mean I know some people take it the wrong way but those people will take everything I say the wrong way but I like to like get away and break away from that and have that time to just focus on the new baby and even if it's only for a few hours um i do tend to come straight home maximum i've stayed in is three days i think but that was with isabel she was my first baby and i was breastfeeding um, but with the others i've come out after one day i think so i do come home straight away but i still like that one day i like having that special one day with just me and chris and our newborn baby being able to completely focus on that especially because isla's so young sorry mila's so young jace is so young you know giving all of them that same and i feel like as well if we were at home i feel like i don't know how the label would go and i wouldn't want to be in my bedroom screaming in pain and jason mila wanting to come to me but me being like no i just put too much pressure on me i feel like and I wouldn't also, I spoke about this with my health visitor actually, my midwife, sorry. And she said that it could even, maybe not, but she said it could even give Jason Mila with them being so young a negative first impression of the new baby. Because you know, new baby hurt mummy type thing. They don't fully understand it. And that just solidified it for me basically. Um, I mean, that's not necessarily gonna happen, but my mind was definitely already made up and that kind of just solidified it like yeah actually they might just resent the baby for you, you never know i'm getting so rude is it harder going from not to one child or one to two nothing can prepare you from going from no children to one i don't i don't think that after two children or three children it's any different because you're used to busy 
schedules, busy life, you're used to it. So like people say to me, now, how can you go from five to six? And I'm like, I don't feel, I mean, I don't know. I've not gone from five to six, but how can you go from four to five? It didn't change much. It helped in fact, because Jace had a younger playmate to play with and it didn't feel overwhelming or too much. Or I feel like when you get to a certain point, it just doesn't get any harder really. But going from no responsibilities to the responsibility of a whole human, especially if you're doing it on your own, is big. <laughs> that was a shock. The most amazing shock in the whole world, but still a shock. Okay, I'm just going to quickly fly f fly through a few. I did DM you, but please can you let me know where Esme's Taylor Swift birthday presents were from? Loads of questions about this. Pretty much all of her Taylor Swift, Swift birthday presents were from... Amazon. The hoodie, Amazon. The makeup bag thing, Amazon. The tote bag, Amazon. Amazon, 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 eh? Is this you not being a slave to the big corporations that you mentioned? One of her other hoodies, Etsy. T-shirts, Etsy. Pretty much that's where all of her presents were from. Why are all the guinea pigs in Isla's room? She seemed really scared of them because the guinea pigs were Isla's pet. Isabel wanted a cat. It's not happening. Esme wants a dog. It's not happening. Isla wanted guinea pigs. That also wasn't happening until Granny came over and said, oh, I'll take you for guinea pigs. I don't regret it one bit, but they were kind of Isla's thing. And yes, Isabel and Esme got one too, but it was kind of like saying Esme could have a dog, but then saying it was going to live in Isabel's bedroom or saying Isabel can have a cat, but it was going to stay in Isla's bedroom. That... Sarah, is a very weird analogy because you would never, ever, ever, ever say to one child, you're going to have a dog or you're going to have a cat because no, those are family pets as are guinea pigs, by the way, but that's another story. <laughs> I mean, why do you have to be so weird in everything that you do? They can only stay in one room. It's not fair to split the guinea pigs up. And it was only fair that they stayed in Isla's. She's not terrified of them. She's 11 and she was a bit nervous to hold them to start with. But she absolutely loves them so much. So that is why they're in Isla's room. Will you be doing a nursery tour reveal? Will you be showing us doing the nursery? Quite a few questions on that. Yes, we will. We're going to be starting that as well very soon. I was going to buy the furniture for this room um, in the next couple of days. But something's come up. So we won't be here to take the delivery of there's that turn of phrase again. Something's come up. Something didn't come up. You just decided to go on holiday. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Was it that desperate that you needed to get away, that you had to drop everything? <laughs> just book a holiday. Fuck you now. <laughs> but I'm definitely going to be ordering the furniture next week. I can't wait. There's also a question, or there's two I've seen, I think, asking if Jace will be starting school in September. No, he won't. My decision is finally final and made up on that question. I know we've been receiving that question for like three years now. <laughs> will you be sending Jace to nursery? Will you be sending Jace to school? And I didn't know. That's why I didn't answer the question. I didn't know um, how I'd feel about that. Um, my children have always gone to school, aside from when lockdown happened and we took them out. And I just... I didn't know what I wanted for Jace. I didn't know what would be best for him, in my, his parent opinion, not your, a stranger opinion, in my opinion. Um, and I've decided against sending Jace to school for my own reasons. And does your reasons include because you don't want him indoctrinated by the school system so that you can keep him at home and ind indoctrinate him into your own system? It's one or the same, you know, come on, Sarah, you can't say you, you don't want him to be learning in a certain way because you don't agree with the school system, but then bring take him home and keep him away from all his friends and all the friends he's possibly going to have and all the brilliant learning opportunities he's going to experience and just it's just no i'm sorry at least give him the chance to have i mean if you're worried about him getting like indoctrinated or whatever crap it is that you're thinking right he's four 
he's not going to learn fuck all. In, in his first year or two at school, it's all about learning through play and, you know, learning basics and stuff like that. He's not going to be left behind. It, it's just, oh, Jesus. It's a massive debate that always leads to people being nasty, but I don't agree with the school system. I don't agree with... You know, a square child having to fit into a circular box. I don't agree with them all having to be at the same stage at the same time. I believe I can homeschool my children better. And I'm not saying that I think I'm better than a teacher, because I'm not. Um, I know that teachers train for years and years. I also know a lot of teachers that have left the teaching system because they, d they also don't agree with the way schools are. You know lots of teachers, do you? <laughs> How? How do you know any teachers, let alone lots of them? You don't go to school, you don't send your kids to school, you know no teachers. If you mean those in the comments of your super duper YouTube channel that say, I'm a teacher and I think you're doing brilliantly. I'm a teacher and I think Jace is well advanced for his age. <laughs> ridiculous Sarah you don't know any teachers you have one person that you ever speak to and that is an ex ifam or ifam or whatever you know Lottie and Stacy and all that right now um but I can if Jace is in a class and he's struggling in a certain subject and he's in school that's tough like it's it's just tough it, he moves past that and I know some of you guys are saying well you just do that subject when he gets home you don't always know about it until it's too late I'm confused right I don't believe that any school teacher in any school up and down the country would leave a four-year-old behind because they haven't learn up to speed right jace is four they're not gonna say oh well jace you you're a bit behind you know and uh, we we can't wait for you so uh we're gonna we're gonna go on to uh, face painting today instead of hand painting you know it's not it's not the end of the world it he's four he's going to get more out of going to school for socialization if nothing else and uh, you're depriving him of that i don't care what you say it's cruel to not allow your ch children to socialize with other kids most people who do homeschooling right and they do it well but they also engage in activities other homeschooling activities where they meet other homeschool kids and do homeschooling based activities with other kids and uh, they socialize that way when do you ever do that ever and by then the confidence is broken and their you know their inside creativity is gone and i just i don't agree with all aspects of schooling Okay, so this is where you are very much putting your own child down. I'm sorry, but I get that school is not for everybody. I do get that, and certain children would benefit from being out of school and everything else, right? I do get it, and that's why there is such a thing as homeschooling, where it would benefit the child to be taken out of school because they're not getting what they should from school. However, you're not giving Jace the chance. Maybe, maybe Jace would be a shining light and he would flourish at school. Maybe he would be top of the class. Maybe he would excel at all his exams. He would excel at all the sporting activities that you say that he doesn't like. And he would do amazingly well. I agree that maybe, based on what we know, maybe Esme would have been, would have flourished with been taken out of school and it was maybe it was right to do so maybe she wasn't doing as well as she would like maybe if she was struggling and she wasn't get all that getting the help that she required i would say on the other side of things based on what we know isabel probably would have been better off staying in school but then again she was being bullied so maybe you know that's something you have to weigh up Based on what we know, Isla was flourishing heavily at school and has since, based on what we can see anyway, has since declined. 
So was that a good thing or bad thing to take her out of school? I think you need to weigh that up. And um, you're not giving Jace any credit whatsoever. Now, you also say that Mila is very bright, right? She's so bright. She can do this. She can do that. She can do the other, right? So she would benefit very much from being in a school setting. She would be able to cope, in my opinion, based on what you're telling us. So that's something that I think you should focus on when she gets to the school age. But I reckon you are going to hold her back as well. And I don't think that holding kids back from education is a good thing just because it suits your own needs. And that's selfish. I'm sorry, Sarah. And I know it's quite a controversial topic, um, but obviously Jace is my child and I'm doing what I think is best for him. And he will not be going to school. He will be homeschooled until he requests otherwise. Until he requests otherwise. It blows my mind just how you have not quite got into the psyche of a, ch a child's mind having had five and nearly six now, right? So how is Jace ever, ever, ever going to figure out that he wants to go to school if he's never been to school? He doesn't know what school is. He doesn't know how it can benefit him. He doesn't know that he can get friends out of it he's never had friends it's not something he wants to do he's never been his his sisters have long since been taken out of school so he never remembers a time when his sisters were in school so he can't relate to that at all so at what point would he turn around and say mum I want to go to school he's never ever going to do it it's the same with the hair and I'm not getting into the hair debate but it is the same thing. He won't know what school is because he's never been and never been given the chance. Will you be getting a new prom for this new baby? I don't think I will, you know. I know lots of people think it's so exciting buying a new pram. And I also have been there. But I just don't... I think it's like wasted money. Like, I've got a bugaboo double that is actually broke now in one place. But I just tend to use a sling more anyway with a new baby. And because... I can drive I don't tend to it's like I'm not doing school runs so I need a pram to do school run and things like that I just don't think I'll get use out of a new pram so I don't think I'm gonna buy one there's quite a few questions about the girl the girls and money um, and I'm guessing that's because they've been on a few tr shopping trips this week so how much do you give the girls per week um, for the and then another one for the girls shopping trips do you give them money or is it their own the girls have had savings accounts since well they've had savings accounts since they were born they weren't much put in those savings accounts when they were born because we didn't earn much money but since we started youtube obviously and we started earning more money the girls got savings accounts so they have separate ones so they have a savings account that they can't access until they're 18 and then and we can't access those either it's like an what's it called an ice it's an account they can't none of us can access until we can put money in but we can't take money out until they're 18 um jason miller also have one of those but then the older three girls also have jason miller don't have these but the older three girls also have another bank account that um is like a it's kind of like a savings account not really a savings account it's kind of like a a pocket money account would you say where we put money in at the start of every month and then they can save that money or they can spend it they tend to save their money my girls don't tend to like to spend their own money which is just hilarious it's probably because i'm so tight and i don't know but but it's okay though because when they turn 18 they'll have their own money lots of it in fact, the majority of Ingham empires will be going to your kids and Isabel in a couple of weeks' time. I bet she's looking forward to that. Thousands upon thousands of pounds due to Isabel. It's so exciting. I can't wait to see her face. They tend to save it, but as they're getting older now and they're able to do things like go shopping on their own, which they've really enjoyed doing, they have started spending some of that money. So it's not like... It's their own money, basically. It's their own money that is in their own accounts that we put in there monthly for them, basically. What are the children's favourite books at the moment? 
Mila's favourite book at the moment is one that we took on the van trip who makes it's, it's I can't remember the actual name of the book but it's about animals that make certain noises and she won't even let me read that book to an hour she read it she reads it to me <laughs> she's like memorized the whole book and she absolutely loves doing the noises of the animals and she's also got a wheels on the bus book that like pulls out and has like funky features on it and that's her favorite we read that about five times a day Jace still really likes um the snail and the whale he likes um, Room on the Broom, The Gruffalo, um, I'm trying to think what other books we've read recently with Jace. He's got like a dinosaur one that does like different, there's like different, it does different things depending on which, um, it's like Dinosaur at Christmas, the dinosaur who pooed, the dinosaur at Halloween, things like that and he loves those, he loves anything to do with monsters and Halloween-y type spooky stories, he really enjoys those. Um, who else? Isla still really likes um, Roald Dahl books um, and she's also got a diary that's like, it's like a book but it's like a diary, it's like a journal type diary book so it's like, it's kind of, it's hard to explain, it's like from the war but she can write in it but there's also diary from other children in it as well and she loves reading that she reads that like most nights Esme is reading her Bridgerton books that she got for her birthday and Isabella can't keep up on what she's reading I'm afraid I don't know um I did get a massive massive long list of books that she's requested for her 18th birthday someone said he's struggling they're struggling with morning sickness at seven weeks pregnant is there anything you can do I I wish I could give you a magic formula down the, this camera, but I can't because there's just nothing that helped me. If you Google things to help morning sickness, it will bring up the typical like sip lemonade, um, ginger biscuits. I genuinely feel like though, it's not one will fit all in that subject. None of them worked for me, absolutely nothing. I just had to ride it out, but I feel for you. I really do because I know how deliberating feeling sick or being sick all day. Oh, it's deliberating, is it? Being morning sick, having morning sickness is deliberating for you. See, Sarah, this is why people say don't homeschool your kids. Now, I know that's a very sweeping statement. Not everybody has to be brilliant at English who um, homeschools their kids. But I do have to wonder when something happens, when like when you're marking your kids' work, because I assume you mark their work and everything, right? When they don't make a spelling mistake, do you correct them? Or do you just say, yeah, that was fine, that looks fine? Or do you just think it's not worth, you know, it's it's not, like, that important? Is that what you think? I don't know. It's, it's very weird to me. Feels, and it's not nice. Hi, Ella. Ella's just come in to brush her hair. She's got out of the shower. Must have for new mums. I'll probably do a little vlog on that, maybe, or a little reel on Instagram. So make sure you follow me on Instagram, Sarah Ingham Official. Um, I got a lovely message from someone. During pregnancy and after pregnancy, have you been super emotional? I'm a first time mum. I'd cry over the most random things whilst I was pregnant, e.g., not being able to get myself a Taco Bell <laughs> because it was too far away. I'd cry over Taco Bell. Uh, I'm now nearly four months postpartum and still cry sometimes when I'm just looking at my little boy. I think I'm going crazy. It's completely normal. It's definitely normal. It's all of those gorgeous hormones that us women get. Um, I don't think I cry randomly. Like, I've never been out and just cried over something. Something has to set me off, but I'll, I'm definitely more emotional. Like, if I see a reel that's, you know, like, they're like dads coming home from, like, being away. They make me cry my eyes out so bad. Somebody winning like The X Factor or getting the golden buzzer, I'll just be sat there crying my eyes out at that. Or Britain's Got Talent, should I say. Um, things like that set me off and make me cry for definite. But, um, or when I get angry, so usually if we're like I'm having an argument, say with someone, say I have an argument with, I can't really even say Chris because me and Chris never argue. But if I was like, I don't know, if Chris does something that frustrates me, usually I'd just be like, I'm so mad about that. But I'll just be like, it'll make me cry instead. So I'm definitely more emotional, for sure. Um, no pregnancy cravings still, a few people are asking about that. I just, I've not had any at all this pregnancy. I don't have any now. The thought of eating ice is quite appealing to me, but I don't think I'm craving that. But 
when I think about it, like right now I'm thinking about eating ice, I, c- I now could go and eat some ice because I'm thinking about it. Um, I don't know if that would still be classed as a craving though. And my friends are about to arrive, so I am going to end this here, but I've got to end on one last question, which is, are you excited for Vlogmas? <laughs> Can we just pretend we're not still in August? Because I'm so excited for Vlogmas this year. So excited. I can- Can I just point out that uh, most people call it December or Advent, you know, to be traditional and everything. Nobody calls it Vlogmas because Vlogmas isn't a time of year. Oh my God, you're so ingrained into YouTube that you think Vlogmas is what we call December. It's not, you know, Uh, you know. You know, Vlogmas was traditionally supposed to be like... um, where a YouTubers came together and they vlogged every day of the month of December and it was supposed to be like Christmas based vlogs every day. That's not really what they do, except for the advent calendars. Yeah, I'm sure we got those to look forward to. Can't wait. I love Christmas. I love the festive season. I love everything about it. And it's just going to be so nice in the run up to Christmas this year with a snuggly little newborn. And yeah, I feel really lucky at the moment and just really excited that I've got so much to look forward to. It's like my favourite time of year anyway. So throw in one of the biggest gifts you can ever receive in your whole life. And it's just like the perfect, the per, the most perfect thing ever and I can't wait but I am also looking forward to Halloween Halloween's Jace's favourite holiday as soon as Christmas is over he's asking when it's Halloween again and I really want to make that special for them this year because obviously I'm pregnant and I will have just given birth so I know a lot of my time will be spent on the new baby I'm going to try and really be prepared for Halloween this year so that it's still special for all of them um I don't usually do Halloween baskets I say I don't usually, there's been years where I've gone way over the top Halloween, I've decorated the whole house, given them big baskets full of gifts, and I remember lots of you guys saying, I don't know why you're doing that, you become spoiled, they'll expect it every year, they don't expect it every year, and in fact I've not done it for like three years, and they've not had any less of a good Halloween, but I would like to do it for them this year, especially for Jace, so I'm collecting bits for like a nice Halloween basket, typically some parents will give their siblings like a Oh my god, I can't be doing with any more of this. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was just about finished anyway. I was trying there to let you have the benefit of uh, listening to Sarah's beautiful voice and uh, everything else. <laughs> but no, I can't do it any longer. I'm sorry. It was a brilliant one. I hope you've enjoyed this very special edition of uh, Sarah Says, but on her main channel go figure, I don't know why she put it on the wrong channel, you know, (laughs) most people wouldn't do that, anyway, but this is Sarah, baby brain, possibly, anyway, until next time, have a lovely day, please remember to give this video a massive thumbs up, and comment all your thoughts down below, and subscribe to the channel, and if 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 you're new, even, (laughs) and uh, have a lovely day, take care of yourselves, and bye-bye, thank God for that, fucking hell,